Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. This is the third video of this new series, Internal Style Concept. Many people in the martial art community mistakenly believe that Taoism and Buddhism have had a great influence in Chinese internal style. Well, in my prior videos, especially in my Tai Chi introduction video, I claimed that Confucianism has had a great impact on the theoretical development of this practice as well. More importantly, I introduced in a prior video that Chinese philosophy is more about exploring the connection between humanity and nature as opposite to Western philosophy which is primarily concerned with logic and truth. For self-cultivation, I believe that besides Taoism, Confucianism can provide a great deal of value. I treat martial art training, especially the three internal styles, as a way of integrating of self-defense, self-discipline, self-cultivation, and many other benefits, both tangible and intangible. I also believe that if you have had years of training experience, this above-mentioned benefit would be understood and experienced by yourself. Also, as a philosophy system, Confucianism has been continuously evolving since its early existence. In history, there were two sets of important figures in Confucianism called Four Sages of Confucianism. The first set was based on the early stage of development of Confucianism. It includes Confucius himself, Yan Hui, who was his most talented disciple, Zheng Zi, another important disciple of Confucius, and Meng Zi, or Menchus, commonly in English. However, another set of four sages of Confucianism includes different names, and this set of names is more popular than the previous one because this set of names contributed greatly in the development of this school in about 2000 years of history. This set of four sages includes Confucius himself, Meng Zi or Meng Chus, Zhu Xi, a great philosopher I introduced before and finally, Wang Yangming, one of the main topics of discussion for today's video. These four sages are often collectively called Kong Meng Zhu Wang by using just their family names. After Wang Yangming passed away for all about 600 years ago, there hasn't been anyone who can be considered as important and prominent as Wang himself in terms of contribution to Confucius school. You can imagine how important he is in the history of Chinese philosophy. I will introduce his achievement and thought in more detail in this video later. Topics covered in today's video First, Wang Yangming and Zhi Xing He Yi. Second, from Zhi Xing He Yi to Body and Mind. Third, three types of forces impact based. Fourth, key to practice it. Fifth, demonstration. And sixth, takeaways. There is quite a bit of information related to philosophy which may be hard to grasp right away, including terms that may have different meanings compared to their regular usage. Pay close attention and revisit the specific sections if needed be. So, let's get started.
。Topic one: 王阳明 and 知行合一 Let us talk further about Wang Yangming. Wang Yangming was a Chinese statesman, military general, and a Neo Confucian philosopher. His family name was Wang, giving name was Shou Ren, and his courtesy name was Bo An. Yang Ming was his nickname and adopted when he was living in the Yang Ming Mountain. Wang Yang Ming's the theory, the unity of knowledge and action, was proposed in a particular historical background. He emphasized that zhi and xing, or knowledge and practice, should be integrated instead of being separated. He also perceived the whole world as one unit, and all people as one individual by saying that a great learner makes himself united with the heaven, earth, and All living beings. Furthermore, his work emphasizes that the cognition of morality goes hand in hand with his practice, and you cannot separate the two. Wang's most famous teaching is the term "zhi xing he yi." Zhi means knowledge and understanding. Xing means Action, he means united, yi means one. So, zhi xing he yi means knowledge and action united as one. This go against the world of Zhu Xi, who existed two hundred years before Wang Yangming. Zhu Xi claimed that you can act only if you know what to do. And acting is more important than knowing. In other words, knowing comes prior to acting. This is why Wang Yangming's work is considered as a fundamental criticism of Zhu Xi's approach. To make it simple and short, zhi xing he yi, the theory of the unity of knowledge and action. Is probably the most well-known aspect of his philosophy. It is the consumption of the relationship between oneself and the world. His philosophy had a great influence in the development of ethics in China and its neighbors, including Japan. I have studied his philosophy for years now. And I have my own understanding as well as criticism of it. In the interest of time, let's focus on its application in internal practice instead of going deeper to his philosophy. Topic two: From zhi xing he yi to body and mind. I introduced in a prior video that, according to research. Chinese martial training became much more systematic during the Ming Dynasty (1368 to 1644 CE) than before. Especially the concept of zhi xing he yi, provided by Wang Yangming, directly or indirectly pushed the development of this practice. The evolution of martial training continued even after the Ming Dynasty. More importantly, the idea behind zhi xing he yi was adopted by the internal style community without explicit knowledge of the term itself. The internal style themselves reached a golden age in the first half of the 20th century, even though. The term itself was not that well known in the community back then. People applied the concept to guide their practice. For the last twenty years, Wang Yangming's thought has been enjoying increasing popularity in China. People from different fields have applied this philosophy as a guiding principle. Of course. 
quite a few scholars promoted his zhi xing he yi concept in martial art practice as well. My opinion of this new phenomenon is that it is great that people in the community are realizing the value of Wang Yangmin philosophy. But we should not stop here. A couple of years ago, I realized that Wang's concept can also be used to explain the body-mind theory in their internal style of practice. Let me elaborate it. Body-mind relationships has been a popular topic for a long time already. Many people have applied this concept in meditation and martial art training. I believe that body-mind concept can be a key content in their internal styles. Think about this. In Xing Yi, Yi means mind. In Tai Chi and Ba Gua, we always emphasize the power of the mind. It is not only in theory, but more importantly, we should also apply it in practice. This is what I will introduce in the following topics. So, I believe that Zhi Xing He Yi is the philosophical foundation of body-mind relationships. Body and mind should unify as one in practice. I will use a new concept that I developed myself to explain the body-mind application for managing power release in each internal style. Let's keep going. Topic 3. Three types of forces. Impact-based. After years of teaching and research, I realized that there are three types of power force in terms of impact felt by your opponent. I call them the bone force, muscle force, and the tendon force. In the title, I only use the word force here, but it is applicable to power as well. To make it simple and easy to speak, I chose to use the word force. Furthermore, I define the three types of forces according to the impact felt by the opponent when any part of your body reaches them. For example, when your arm reaches the opponent's arm in martial application. So, what exactly are these forces and how do you differentiate between them? Well, the bone force feels hard and solid. It is seen that one's bone got hit. This force is sharp and it feels as if it impacts the opponent's body structure. The muscle force feels heavy. The opponent's body feels overwhelmed by a massive force, but it is not as sharp as the bone force. The opponent should experience a heavy dull attack as if struck by a blunt object. The tendon force feels flexible. It seems like the force approaches very fast and disappears very fast as well. It's just like a shock felt by a sudden force. The feeling is not as painful as the bone force, nor as heavy and overwhelming as the muscle force. The effect of this kind of force is very light yet powerful. Some people may call it inch force. Sometimes people call it duan jin or short force. So, these three types of forces are based on their effect and the impact felt by an opponent, not at all by the outer manifestation or physical shape or movement of the body. It is a partner experience based method, quite different from other methods. If you are experienced in martial applications, you may have felt all of these forces already. My goal here is to clarify and categorize them so that we will be able to identify them first 
and later determine how to counter them. To summarize, there are three types of forces according to the impact felt by your opponent. Those are bone forces, muscle forces, and tendon force. Topic 4. Key to practice it. Now, let me remind you that there is a relation between the body and the mind. More specifically, the mind should be able to direct and lead the body movement. Be careful here. What I'm saying here is that the mind should be able to lead our body movements. The key word here is lead. Easier said than done. Very often, the mind cannot lead the body, or the body can resist the command sent by the, by the mind. The unification of the body and the mind requires a long time spent in training. At the same time, the body should be able to reflect the intentions of the mind. Again, easier said than done. You may have experienced that very often your mind may be willing, but your body just won't follow. So far, I believe that you have already figured out that the first key principle in practice is to make sure that the mind will lead the movement and the body should be able to follow and reflect the intentions of the mind. A unity of mind and body, in other words, unity of knowledge and action, or zhi xing he yi. Now, I'd like to explain three types of force in more detail. For each type of force, I will talk about the mind or intention, physical movement, timing, speed, and other necessary factors. By the way, the best way to understand this topic better is to have a practice partner. You can try to test each, each point that I will mention here with your partner and ask their feedback. First, the bone force. To apply bone force, you should focus on your opponent's body structure. Your mind should aim at their bone structures. It seems that you will send your force through your own bone structure to the opponent's bone structure. This force is transferred to the opponent's bone structure. It is not necessary to make his movement fast. Second, the muscle force. To, to apply muscle force, you should focus on your own muscles. Visualize that you are throwing your muscle out and your own muscle would replace your opponent's muscle or combine them together on your opponent's body. That is the mindset required to apply this force. The speed required is higher than that for bone force. Also, it seems that the striking part of the body such as your arm should maintain contact with the opponent's arm for a bit longer than that in case of a bone force. Third, the tendon force. This is a special type of force. It requires high speed in order to issue a quick strike to create a shocking sensation on your opponent. Also, imagine that the striking part of your body, such as your arm, is a spring or a whip. It reaches the opponent's body fast, releases the force, and then naturally moves back or returns to its original state. This so-called inch force or short force actually is the tendon force. Timing is critical to issue this kind of a force. Now, let me demonstrate one of them. Topic 5. Demonstration. Today, I'd like to demonstrate how to practice the bone force with one of my students. It's a two-person exercise. Like I said that 
we focus on sending the force to the opponent's body through the bone structure. Also, try not to use hands in practice. Instead, try to practice the arm since it requires a higher level of force practice. Concentrate your mind and make sure your mind will be able to lead your movement and your body. Especially, your arm can coordinate with the mind and follow the command sent by the mind. Ok, now I would like to demonstrate one exercise with my student about how to send the force, we call it bone force, with this single movement. It's a two-person exercise. I hope you will enjoy this. Ok, let's come to here. So, I'm the person A. I will practice this. So, person B, just hold this area. This, no, no, this area. So, what I do, I send the force to here. So, you see the, the coordination, the here turn outward, here drill inward. Then, aim again, aim the force to the person's structure. So, one. Then, switch to the other side. Again, one. So, use the body weight to, in, to initi initiate the, mo mo the movement. So, one, like this. Then, one, then, one. So you can keep going for many times. So let me explain a little bit more detailed here. Okay, more detailed. So once I'm holding here, your mind is go through here to this area. Second, body sink down. Here the turning motion here should not be so big, about 40, 60 degree maximum. You see, like this. We focus at the here, aim at the here, then push the force. Then backhand coordinate with this movement and use the mind to direct the power from this area through the person's arm to his body. So one, then the other side, then one. Topic six, takeaways. As with other recent videos, this one is also pretty short, but many topics have been introduced. Wang Yangming and his Zhi Xing He Yi concept has been explained. Based on Zhi Xing He Yi and the body mind concept has been introduced. A feeling based three type of force has been elaborated, including a demonstration of a two person exercise. I hope today's talk and the demonstration give you a good idea of the three type of force and what they look like. I highly recommend you practice them with a training partner. In the early stage of your training, you need a partner to practice these kind of forces. Then, after you master the practice of these different forces, then you can just work on them by yourself. Remember, to make it work, body and the mind have to integrate as one. That concludes today's video. Thank you for watching, see you next time and enjoy your practice.